guys, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of SheBoss. I am Megan with Flourish. And before we get started, um, SheBoss is a video series that we do. We drop it every Wednesday at 3.30 Central, where we have the absolute honor of talking to some of the most amazing women that we get a chance to come in contact with on a daily basis. We are based in Huntsville, Alabama, and there's absolutely no shortage of rock stars here left and right. Um, and my guest today definitely mirrors that. So I'm so excited for you guys to get to know her and hear about her journey. So thank you so much for joining us. We have Peggy Lee Wright, and she is the founder of The Company You Keep. And some interesting fun facts about Peggy that um, really makes her a total badass is that she um, <laughs> used to fly Black Hawk, <laughs> Black Hawk helicopters, um, which is pretty awesome. And I've heard just such amazing things about her and had a chance to chat with her. So I, I just think she would be, it's just going to be such an amazing story that we get to hear. So Peggy, thank you so much for chatting with us today. Um, and just, you know, kind of give us a little bit of overview of you and talk about your journey and, and what drove you to go into the army and all that good stuff. And we'll just learn all the things about you today. I'm so excited to be here. And um, in just our, our few moments of discussion prior you know, finding all of the maybe two degrees of separation that, that happens here in Huntsville between us. Uh, so that was very exciting. But, but yes, uh, my family and I, we've been in Huntsville now since 2011. Um, I did go into the military. I come from a military family. My father uh, was a Korean vet, Korean War vet, as well as a Vietnam War vet, um, grew up at Fort Bragg, North Carolina with the 82nd Airborne and both of my older brothers ended up going into the military. So I was pretty adamant that I was not going to go into the military <laughs> and actually went to college in New York and was living the life as a college student and then even graduated and moved into the city and was working for a publishing company and, you know, trying to do everything other than what the rest of my family had done. And um, it was right when the first desert storm had, had broken out and I went home to visit my family and uh, a fam and we lived right off of uh, Fort Bragg. Um, at the time, my mother even worked on Fort Bragg um, as a civilian and a family friend said, what are you doing? Um, you know that you know that we're calling you in in, in terms of like that feeling that's pulling at your heart. Mm -hmm. um, we need you. And um, I went back to New York with a, uh, you know, still not going to do it. And, and that really, that really kind of hit home. And it was true. I had kind of been trying to, ch to change, change my fate a little bit on, on just trying to be different. And I found that it was quite okay for me to, um, to just kind of give into that and say, um, you know what, this really is my calling and what I should be doing. So I, I signed up and the next thing I knew I was in an ROTC program and got commissioned as a second lieutenant and was on my way to Fort Rucker to learn how to fly. And uh, it was it was definitely one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Yeah. Initially, what took you, what surprised you that maybe you weren't expecting? Um, at first, you know, we're talking about, I went to flight school in 1996, and I think in my flight school class, um, you're talking about, you know, a little over 50 to 60 um, commissioned officers, warrants and commissions, and I think uh, I was one of maybe uh, three females that were in the class at the time. And when I showed up to my first unit um, at the 82nd Airborne, I think within our entire brigade, um, there was less than a handful of, of female pilots. And so that was a little surprising to me um, at first. But um, um, I think that for me, growing up in a household filled with men. Um, you could handle it. I could handle it. I, I, knew, I knew what to expect. Um, but it also, for the first time, it really gave me an opportunity to have a camaraderie with other women um, that were experiencing exactly what I was experiencing, that, um, that we're, we're doing something a little different, a little against the norm at the time, um, and that's okay, and we were thriving, and um, our counterparts, my colleagues, uh, men and women alike, have always been absolutely amazing. I had a phenomenal experience in the military and I can never say that I was treated any differently 
um, I, I absolutely loved it. I actually get emotional talking about it because I still am very close to a lot of people that I served with. Yeah, that is awesome. And I think that's a, I think that's a big misconception about the military that women are sort of on their own and left to fend for themselves. But you, you found it was quite the opposite. It sounds like where you really had a team there. I really did. Um, I, uh, I look back on that time and I only have wonderful things to say about um, my superiors that I worked for, about the people that worked with me, my colleagues, about um, the soldiers that were in my charge that I worked with. Um, it was definitely a, um, a mutual respect and um, it was something that I will, I will cherish uh, for a very long time. And, and, you know, going back now, you know, uh, those 20 years and, and 25 years and, and uh, seeing people that I used to serve with. And now, you know, we're all in our fifties and we have kids and we're all in our next chapter of our life doing something. Um, and thinking about the things that we did uh, in the military, what is just, it's amazing. And I think it really helped shape me, not just my upbringing in that environment, but definitely the people, the men and women that I had the opportunity to serve with really changed me and really shaped me um, to be a better person. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So think, talking about the next chapter in your life, I would imagine that there's a lot of traits of that you need to be able to be a Black Hawk pilot independence, um, many times where you maybe are flying solo, which means you're 100% responsible for a lot of the aspects of what you're doing. Um, having to be adaptable, like you have no idea what can come your way and just needing to be prepared for that, you know, that aspect, but also teamwork. Um, I've always heard that with the military, the number one thing they teach you about is how to be a leader, um, you know, above, you know, most other things. That way you are just equipped to handle any situation and rely on those around you and identify what their strengths are and their skill sets. That way it can better, you know, better you for the team. How did you take some of that knowledge into the next phase of your life and the next chapter of your life? Because now you have the company you keep, which you started, um, you know, tell us a little about that and how that kind of brought you into that phase of your life. Okay. So, um, I had a very, very close, uh, friend, um, who was my mentor and, uh, he was actually, uh, went into the air force, became a two-star general in the air force, went on, was a pilot, went on to fly commercial airlines and he said to me, when I was kind of going into aviation and starting my military career, he said, always remember to embrace the suck. <laughs> and I thought, what in the heck does that mean? And it was really just wrap your arms around the things that aren't going to be so pleasant. Because if you can wrap your arms around the unpleasant things and embrace them, then you're controlling the outcome rather than them controlling you. Oh my gosh, I love that. And so my saying throughout, you know, my life in, in him sharing that with me, and that actually became something that he put on. I know you've seen the military, you know, when we get into command, we get coins and we put insignia and sayings and on his uh, coin, he actually had embrace the suck oh because that was what he was known for. And, and he, when he shared that with me, I started using it because it, feeds into so many aspects of life, not just military. Yeah. And so um, when I left the military, I became a mom. My first, uh, my first job outside of the military was being a full-time mom. We have four children, they're all in their teens now, um, but I really threw myself into being a mom. And any mom out there, whether she's a stay-at-home mom like I was or trying to be a mom and have a, have a career, um, it's not always pretty. It sometimes, you know, uh, blows chunks to be quite frank. It's, it's not always the most pleasant experience. And, um, I had to learn how to embrace the suck with that, that there were going to be things about parenting that I could not control. Yeah. Um, being a control freak as a pilot, you can imagine. Um, and I had to embrace that. And so, that kind of led into, or that mindset has always kind of been the, the little voice in the back of my head going, this is going to be hard and this is going to be rough, but you're going to evolve. Yeah. And as you're evolving, roll with it, embrace it um, so that you can control it. So 
Um, what led me into starting my own company is as my children got older um, and became a little bit more um, self-sufficient, um, I got back into the world of education. I was uh, teaching, uh, doing a lot of consulting work, but also doing uh, teaching at Randolph, um, phenomenal school, and then moved up into an administration uh, position, helping them with their advancement. And at the same time that I was doing that, my husband was starting his own company. And um, it just kind of, it kind of put a little, another little voice in my head that said, you know, I could do this. Um, so right before I turned 50, I made the jump to throw caution to the wind and do what I've always wanted to do. And that was start a BD firm. And so that's what I did. And I think, uh, had I known at the time how insane of an idea that was, I wouldn't have done it. So I'm glad that I had no idea because <laughs> it's been, it's been by far one of the best things I've ever done. Yeah. Would you say it's also one of the hardest? I would definitely say it's one of the hardest. And I feel very thankful that I decided to make that jump in a town like Huntsville. Um, I think I shared with you a little bit when we were first getting to know each other that um, with both my husband and I being in the military, my husband was in for over 23 years. I was in for a little over 10. Um, we never really felt like we were part of a community and you don't really invest too much in the community that you're stationed at. Well, many times you're stationed overseas anyway. Um, but you don't really invest in the community because you know, you're leaving soon. Right. Um, and so when we came to Huntsville and decided to make Huntsville our home, I really threw myself into being part of this community mm -hmm. and um, whether that was through leadership programs, uh, going to um, events, getting involved in the nonprofits that we have here. We have some amazing nonprofits really trying to do more for veterans um, and for education. And that, that made it so that I started to getting to know people. And when people saw um, that I was stepping out on my own, it was one of, it was such an easy transition for me because of the genuine relationships that I had made with, um, with the people who do wonderful things here in Huntsville. And so it was a, it was an easy transition. It was easy to have people that could automatically vouch for me. Um, and say, Hey, you know, you might want to talk to Peggy Lee. She's got some, she's got some ideas that, that you might enjoy. Yeah. Um, hardest a thousand percent hardest thing I've ever done because I now can't complain about anybody <laughs> if it, <laughs> it's true if it's a great day hey it's a great day and if I'm mad at the boss that means I'm mad at me and so it's kind take of it up like, with the boss yeah. exactly take <laughs> it up with the boss and arguing with yourself is you know never easy so <laughs> doesn't um, really go anywhere either it doesn't, it doesn't yeah you just find yourself going around a circle so um, but yeah, but definitely by far, uh, I tell TJ and I've talked about this several times for both of us. He was in much longer than I was. Um, but both of us in terms of finding something that gave us that same passion as when we served in the military, um, having our, having he, he having his own business, um, me having my own business, it's that same type of passion because I'm able to serve now. It's kind of come full circle. Whereas before I was the service member serving our nation, I now am serving DOD contractors and helping them provide for the warfighter. And I just feel like, wow, it's come full circle. So it's, it gives me that same passionate, that same uh, vibe that, yeah. that I've been missing for a bit. Yeah, I love that. I love that so much. So before we dive into your company a little bit and understand yeah. what it is that you guys do exactly, you know, you had um, you had TJ next to you, so you can kind of watch what he went through starting a business yes. and some of the challenges that he had. But what what are some tips, I guess, because we, we have a lot of people who are either thinking about starting a business, have that idea in their head, but they don't really, really know what steps to take. How do they pull it together? Do they have to have everything kind of pulled together and tons of capital, full business plan, all that kind of stuff. And that's not really the case necessarily. So what are some tips that you would have to an audience who might be in that, that, that type of boat? Absolutely. Well, I am a big, big advocate of, I'm not going to try and reinvent the wheel when there are hundreds of thousands of people who have done this before me, maybe with a different idea, but they're going to have some things that I can, 
I can definitely build off of or take into consideration. So one of the first things I did was I went straight over to the Catalyst Center and said, you know, I don't know what I'm doing, but I have this idea and I kind of think it might sort of maybe sort of kind of work. Yeah. And, um, and they immediately put me with uh, uh, a mentor who, uh, by the name of Kevin Ho Hoey, who I had known from my previous life, um, had been able to work uh, with him on a couple of things. And immediately it just synced where my ideas and his guidance on um, how to kind of set this up worked. And I went in with no capital. Um, I was a one woman, you know, one woman operation and I've got a great idea and I'm going to put it out there and, and see if folks will, will buy into it and, and want the service that I'm providing. Um, watching uh, TJ, you know, TJ went through um, his industry, a few years of industry, kind of learning some tricks of the trade. And that helped him feel secure. Uh, I did not want to spend time going through industry and learning tricks of the trade. I just kind of wanted to jump out there. I felt like I, I had enough um, background and experience doing business development type work that I could do it. But I will say, and I've said this to anyone who will ask, I don't think that I could have made the leap um, into saying I want to do and, and run my own company. Um, if not for leadership greater Huntsville, I give them credit all day long. Um, because when I went to that course, I was put into a class with 52 other professionals, leaders in their industry, which, you know, why the heck was I in that class? I've still tried to figure that out, <laughs> but leaders within industry here in Huntsville that, um, I made really genuine relationships with. And in that time, that one year of working with them, you know, when I made the announcement that I was jumping out on my own, you know, the uh, consensus was, well, we've seen what you do for free. We've seen what you've worked on at nonprofits and then just your volunteer. Mm -hmm. What do you, what, what does this look like when you're actually making money? Like, like we need to see this. So we we want to take a chance. And so actually three of my first clients were folks from my leadership class that reached out to me and said, hey, I've heard you're doing this. Would you be interested in maybe talking about it? And um, that set into motion, you know, the snowball effect. Uh, you do good work for one person, someone else is going to hear about it. And so now um, the firm at, in June, we will hit one year Yay. of being a, being a company birthday party. <laughs> and, um, in that one year, I now have 10 clients. I have, uh, small service disabled veteran owned businesses. I have hub zone businesses. I have two large clients that are out of D the DC area, um, that are large companies. Mm -hmm. Um, it runs the gamut. And so it's exciting. Um, awesome. I feel like I'm building something that is, a little different, um, but not so not so radical that people can't understand it. Yeah, so I love that, um, and I completely agree with you. And I love the fact that you talked about putting yourself out there, donating your time, volunteering, or well, maybe not donating, but volunteering your time. Absolutely, different opportunities where you know it may not be something that you're going to get an immediate return on, but it's a passion project that you can kind of pour yourself into and other people get to see what you're made of. I mean, it's a great way to kind of showcase your skill sets, collaborate with other people, um, and, and while also doing a really great thing. So I think that's a great piece of advice that if you have any sort of opportunity to volunteer or be on a committee or, you know, be part of your, you know, your children's school board in some way where you can be able to interact and collaborate with other people, what a great way for people to get to know you. It really is. And I think, you know, rising tide lifts all ships. Um, I've always believed that. Um, I think first and foremost, when you go in with a genuine heart that you want to help and that you give it a hundred percent, when you make a commitment, you stick to the commitment, even when the walls are crashing down behind you, if you've made a commitment to someone or to an organization, you stick to it. And when people see that type of genuine um, want or passion to do good for others, um, it doesn't matter what you do. It, it comes back tenfold. Um, and, and 
it's been a, it's been a blessing. I feel like I have, uh, for the first time in many, many years have truly become a part of a phenomenal community and I love it. That's awesome. That is awesome. That's such a great piece of advice. Lead with your heart and go in it for the right reason. And it's, absolutely, it, it all works out, you know, it all does sucks. work out. That's right. Yeah. And then just embrace the suck. Embrace the suck. Cause you know, at it's, some going point, to suck. it's going to suck at some point during your day, you're going to feel that way. So yeah. wrap your arm around it, wrap your arm around it, make it your friend and you yeah. will be okay. So well, I, that, that, so that perspective I think is so important for, for everybody to think about. And, you know, me personally, it took, it took a very life changing moment for me personally to like have that slap in the face, eye open, aha moment where it was like, okay, this, you know, you have to just keep an open mind and maintain a positive perspective and get out of the muck of the day-to-day BS, frankly, and just focus on what's important. And when you do that and you open your mind to things around you, people around you, opportunities around you, and lead with your heart versus a what's in it for me mentality, um, it's amazing what can happen. It really is. Absolutely. And I think, you know, Megan, you bring up a great point because I think the one aspect. I've always kind of been, you know, no matter, you know, man, woman, no matter what career you go into, we're all in this together. But I think the one thing that sometimes I have found with other women is that we have, a, we have to evolve. Women are constantly changing. You know, first we're that career, that college girl, then we're that career woman. And then if we decide to get married, we're a spouse. And then, okay, what does that now mean as in terms of my career? Then it's, okay, now I'm kind of earning, you know, yearning to be a mom. Okay, what does that mean for my career? For me, it meant I stepped away. Um, then it's, okay, I'm ready to get back in there. Well, how the heck do I do that when I've been out of the game for so long? So it's this constant kind of evolution for women that we are constantly changing the way others see us because we're constantly changing our, our, uh, ourselves really in terms of who we are. And, you know, we're mommy to somebody, but we're also wifey to somewhere else. And we might be a colleague to someone here and a yeah. boss to someone over here. And we wear so many different hats that, um, it can be difficult. And I think that, a lot of times for women, I know at least I'll speak for myself, you feel guilty. I have felt guilty about, okay, I, I do feel that I want to do this particular thing, this particular job, or I want to work with this particular nonprofit because it makes me happy. And that, that can be difficult when you're being pulled in so many directions and was women uh, again, I'll speak for myself. I'll be the first one to put myself in a guilt trip. Oh, I can guilt trip myself. You know, the babies need me. The husband needs me. The parents need me. Someone needs me. And I think, um, you know, that, that I know that, you know, that it sounds a little cliche, but, you know, putting the, putting the mask on yourself first, you know, in the, oh, in the nice. aircraft, you know, take care of yourself first. Um, it's true. And so, um, I found that doing something that I really love has made me a better parent. Right. It's made me a better wife. It's made me a better friend. Um, it's made me a better daughter. Um, all those things. And so um, I shouldn't have guilted myself so bad because this yeah. is great. <laughs> but you recognize it. And that's the important I thing. I recognize it. And, you, and yeah. you have to be, you have to consciously recognize those types of things and not get caught up in, in, you know, another world, I guess, so to speak, where you just lose sight of that and what's important. And Absolutely. We've, Absolutely. We've, talked, we've talked a lot about that on this series where, um, you know, making, making yourself a priority that way you can give a hundred percent, you know, you, you've got to focus on yourself that way you can be a better mom and a better mm-hmm. wife and a better colleague and um, all of that. Because if you, if you don't take care of that, you know, it's just things can crumble, crumble. Really Absolutely. Quickly. Yeah. Such a hard thing to do, though. It, it really is. is. It is really hard. I agree. I completely agree. So, so on that, out of curiosity, having all of the, wearing all of the hats that you wear and having four kids, I have three. I'm like, good Lord, um, <laughs> God bless you, because it's, it's hard. It is hard. It is. There is no doubt about that. But again, to your point, though, I think keeping that perspective and just embracing knowing that things are going to suck and that's okay. And Absolutely. not being, 
it's, it's all about perspective. Completely agree. And, and people will ask me, you know, how do you find balance? Yeah. And I say, oh, there is no balance. <laughs> Some days the kids are going to get 100% of me. And other days my job is going to get 100% of me. Other days, you know, we're, we're, we're able to do a 50, 50 split sometimes there, but there's never a balance. You know, someone is always going to get a little less of what they want. Um, I can find a way, you know, on the weekends to, to squeeze that in for, for my kids. I can find a way to work late nights for my clients. Um, I can find a way to, you know, we're going to sneak in a lunch date for my husband and I to actually be able to see each other and have adult conversation. Um, but, you know, there's, it's always it's always an ebb and a flow. There's yeah. never balance. And I think that that is the other thing that uh, we as women are always looking for a balance. And I think it's okay to simply say, yeah, no balance. There's mm -hmm. no balance, but that's okay. Um, because I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to ride this wave um, just fine with all the bumps and the, that come with it. So. I, there was a comment that was made at a recent event I went to um, the mompreneur event, also part of the catalyst. Um, but yes. it was, you know, as women, you, you always think, and social media does not help with this in any way, but you think that you, you want to have it all, you know, and yes. you, want, you want to be the best this and the best that, and, um, just all the things. And you, you know, the comment that came back, which I love, and I remind myself of this often is you can absolutely have it all. You just have to redefine what all means to you. Right. Mm, I love that. Right. Because you can't take what, what, what was something that's all to somebody else and compare yourself to that because everybody's life is totally different. And, you know, if you have a special needs child at home or you're having, you're mm. homeschooling your kids trying to right. run a business or you, ha you know, whatever the case might be, like you have to redefine what that looks like. And that is a okay to do. Um, but I think that's something that we get, um, we just get caught up in and thinking that we have to just not necessarily compare ourselves to other people, but there's like this persona and box that you think you need to be in as opposed to figuring out what Absolutely. works best for you, you know? Absolutely. Or, you know, we do have it all. We just don't have it all at one time. Yeah. It <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It just, it operates on its own schedule that works well for you. you know? Absolutely. But yeah. So tell us, tell us about, I've got a couple um, additional questions for you, but I want to know about your business and what it is that you guys do exactly. And I love the Absolutely. fact about how you were talking about you guys have sort of come full circle and how you've taken all of this experience that you've had throughout your life of, you know, being a pilot and being a mom and getting involved with nonprofits and leadership and Randolph and all of that. How is that now packaged up into the passion project that you call this business every day? Absolutely. So I think Huntsville is a really unique town. And when I was really sitting back and trying to figure out how to do business development a little differently or what made me excited about business development and the potential for it in Huntsville. It was that there are five entities in Huntsville that work together and, and that so easily work together. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes we ignore that, that circle. And I, and and I call them, for me, they're like pillars, like five pillars. So we've got the military, we've got industry, we've got nonprofit, we've got academic, and we've got government. And those five, if you can take those five entities and find a way for them to work together, then everyone wins. And so being able to take um, a business and say, Hey, you guys are doing some phenomenal things. Why don't we partner this business with this academic institution in order for a win-win? Oh, by the way, this academic institution has a relationship with one of the agencies on the arsenal. Now it's a three-way win. Oh, by the way, there is a nonprofit that is in need that your company and this school have a specialty to be able to help them. Awesome. Now it's a four way win. And then and when the you ships start, all rise, exactly. Yeah. And so that for me has been, um, the pillars that I stand behind when I approach business development, it's not just about what type of contract can we go after to win? Um, it's not just about ensuring that, um, there's a lot of social media coverage about a particular company or, hey, I want to introduce this particular company to as many 
you know, fancy names as possible. Um, it's about what can be done within this company or this organization or this school to ensure that they're playing with all of the key enterprises here. Yeah. Those enterprises being those five pillars, um, because without those enterprises, we're just like every other city and we're not like every other city. Yeah. We're really special. Yeah. And, um, and those five enterprises or those five entities really play well together here in Huntsville. You know, your academic, your government, your military, industry, and nonprofit. It's amazing. And so um, to be able to pull those five together and be able to show companies and organizations and schools that, hey, um, there's a lot we can do here if you're willing and you're open to these, these ideas and, and thinking outside the box a little bit. That's awesome. So every day is totally different. Every client every, is totally different. And I, every day, yeah. And I'm I would imagine, oh, no, no, I, I, mean, I was going to say, I would imagine with that approach, um, that's a huge value offering because you really, I would imagine that you really bring this unique perspective of holistically seeing how you can bring these different parts and pieces together. And when you do that um, with a, with a great intent and a passionate intent and collaborate with people who make each other better in whatever capacity that is for the greater good. Um, there's, there's nothing but success that I would imagine that comes out the other end. And so having someone like you who can kind of pull all those pieces together is invaluable. And, you know, and I I love that you say that because it's also, um, it even, and it's a slow process sometimes, you know, BD, you, you cannot, uh, fast track relationships. And I think that's the other, the other, uh, piece of this that has, that I've, that, uh, the company you keep has been so fortunate of is that this wasn't a, uh, Hey, I'm going to sell you something. Mm-hmm. Hey, I need to be your friend because we're going to do great things together. This was a, I know someone who knows someone and the two of you can help each other in very good ways. And, um, and I think that, that so many of us in Huntsville, we do that already. We're yeah. all, we're constantly looking out for our friend and, Hey, have you met this person? And have you met this person? And so many, so much of that, that, um, people do naturally, uh, can be so beneficial for everyone involved. Mm-hmm. And, and for my company, um, the way that that really starts to kind of build upon itself is when the organizations that I represent, um, realize that there are going to be some great people that they're going to meet, um, and some genuine relationships. And I think that's my favorite part is I get to work with people that I genuinely like and generally want to work with. And so introducing these entities to each other and seeing what kind of magic we can make is, is super fun. Yeah. Well, it's very long term too. It doesn't sound like it's anything that's just this quick fix or, you know, let's jump on this. Yeah. It's a long-term beneficial relationship. That's a win-win and you get to see these beautiful things come out of it. Yeah. It's tons of fun. I'm having a blast. Yeah. As you should be, as you should be. (laughs) You earned it. So what's what's next for the company you keep? What gets you excited about what's coming, what's happening over the next one, three, five years for you guys? Yeah. Um, It's funny. You should ask that because, um, we're coming up on our one year anniversary and I need to start thinking of what the next, uh, the next strategic push is going to be for the company. And so right now, uh, I'm looking at having another extension of the company, meaning right now I have it as a BD firm. I'm looking to open another division that is actually doing DOD contracting ourselves. Um, and because, uh, it's interesting as I'll get out. I'm enjoying it. I am finding that I'm enjoying the chase and the hunt of some of those uh, things within DOD contracting. Um, and I want to learn more that, you know, when I think one of the things about we, that I mentioned earlier about women always evolving, that we go through these evolutions is I also think that women are hungry to constantly learn. Oh, We're constantly course. trying to know more. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I'll ever know everything I need to know about BD, but I'm getting pretty comfortable with it. And so now I'm looking to do something within DOD contracting and possibly start another division within the company. So that's where I'm at. 
That is so awesome. more to come. Yeah. yeah. Well, and being here and I mean, we've, we've had a lot of conversations around that too with, with our company of this is such, there's such a plethora of opportunity um, for business development here in that realm. Yes. Um, and we're, we're sort of finding that too. It's like, oh, well, we could, we could be doing this and servicing these types of clients because they don't think the way that, that we think that we think. Um, Absolutely. You know, yeah, about, about strategic marketing and public relations. And it's just, it's very exciting. And going back to your point where women kind of want to wear all these hats, you know, if you're curious about something and you don't know enough about it to, you know, have a, have a really good confidence streak about it. It's like, yeah, I'm going to go learn more. That's just what I'm going to do because I want exactly. to feel good about it and be involved in that conversation, you know? And I love that. I love that you said that um, because when I first had the inkling of the company, it was, hey, maybe this could evolve into something that, that turned into more of a DOD contracting, but I don't, I didn't know enough yet. Yeah. And I needed to be able to be in those circles yeah. I needed to be able to learn a little bit more to see if that would even be a, an avenue of approach for the company. And, um, and so now I'm considering it. And I think that that's, I think it's exciting um, for companies like mine, for companies like yours with Flourish, that when you really start to get out there and see everything and really start to learn the Huntsville market and mm -hmm. what's going on here and the exciting things that are going on here, you start to kind of, um, dream bigger. Oh, for sure. You know, I, and it's, it's fun. I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a way to go backwards in that aspect. If you're based in this community, I realize that's not the common thread among a lot of cities, but to your point, Huntsville is very unique. It's very special. It's, it stands apart from the rest of the region in my personal opinion. Um, right. and, and just consistently fuels opportunity everywhere that you look, as long as you keep an open mind and ask a lot of questions and be curious about things, you know? Absolutely. Oh, well, there, there's no doubt that um, the business will be exploding. Uh, you know, if I've heard, I've heard of many, many positive things about you and the company that you have and where you guys are going. But, um, you know, one of the things that stood out to me was that you just make stuff happen. Things just happen when, when you're involved with it. So there's no doubt that there's going to be a lot of other amazing things to come. So it's, I'm so excited for you and, and so appreciate you sharing your story with me. Um, and I do have one last question before we go, if you don't mind. Yes, ma'am. Um, so a, um, a, a shared colleague and friend of ours told me a little secret about you that I'm curious if you can share. I understand that you are a mad um, karaoke singer, specifically as it relates to <laughs> 90s hip hop is what I understand. So I just, I want to hear a little bit about <laughs> what are your go-to jams? Um, okay. For hip -hop? okay. I am the karaoke queen. I, Let's yeah. just, okay. <laughs> I, and I don't, I don't karaoke much, but when I do, Ooh, I leave out. it, I leave it on the floor and I have two go-tos. I'm so embarrassed right now. This is like so great. I have two go-tos. The first one is Charlie Daniels, The Devil Went Down to Georgia. Oh gosh, yes, good, good one. I have known that backwards, forwards, left and right since I was like six. That probably does not say a whole lot for my upbringing, but I <laughs> love it. And then my second go-to, completely different genre, is the very first rap song ever made by the Sugar Hill Gang, Hip Hop, a Rapper's Delight. You love Sugar it. Hill Gang. And I, my brother and I, so again, I was quite young, and my brother had received the album, you remember, you know, the, the actual album. When they used to have the, actual you know, album. On a record player um, for Christmas. And we literally sat in his room for an entire weekend <laughs> playing it and pausing it and then singing it, wrapping it back to each other. Oh, how funny. To make sure that we understood the, stood the words. And when it came to, you know, came to, came to some of it, you know, he would tell me, okay, you're not allowed to say that. And so, <laughs> and so, um, so those are, those are my two. And I already know who shared this story with you. And I uh, will be having a meeting later. <laughs> Yoki at the karaoke <laughs> at the bar at the karaoke. Well, now, now it's a great time since he's recently retired. So uh, this is yes. a perfect time. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. That's well, I, well, hilarious. <laughs> well, hopefully we will get a chance to go do that uh, once we get you know out of this quarantine and can 
go out yeah. and mingle and all of that. But um, well, the next time you need to fill a segment, um, or if you want to start doing commercials, I'll do. I'll be the karaoke uh, person in between in between segments. Perfect. I love it. We'll come that, up with a jingle. That, <laughs> I love it. Well, Peggy, thank you so much. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your time and just learning about you. And you are just, you're absolutely wonderful and beautiful. And I actually heard, were you a former beauty queen? Oh my gosh. Or is that just a rumor that I heard? So TJ must have told you that because he's so, the only person. I, I swear it. I heard it from somebody else. Maybe I didn't. Uh -huh. I'm not sure. No, no, no. Only TJ. Only TJ? Dare to speak that because he knows, you know. There's nothing I can do because I'm married <laughs> for 25 years. Where am I going? Um, so, yeah, that was many moons ago when I was 18, I think, 17 or 18 in North Carolina. Many moons ago. Wow. So, But it helped pay for college. So There you go. If there's an intent that's going to better you, then why not? As long as it's legal and it doesn't make it to the exactly. internet in any negative way. Exactly. So remember, we talked about evolving the evolution <laughs> right. of women. <laughs> right, right. I love it. Well, you know, it's it's that kind of confidence and the the do whatever it takes, you know, to progress and get yourself to where you you know that you should Absolutely. be. Absolutely. Um, which and I think I'm proud of. I'm proud of those times. I'm yeah. telling you that one of the biggest things that came out of doing that was the being comfortable uh, publicly speaking. It was like the the biggest boost to confidence um, yeah. in terms of being able to talk and off the cuff and those kind of things. So, yeah. and, you know, and women, ironically, that, that's helping you now, right? Exactly. Throughout your entire career. So. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Awesome. Wow. What an evolution. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, you know, it'll be great to see what happens in the next 50 years, you know, for sure. So absolutely. Anyways, Maybe well, I'll get back to flying. Yeah, right. Exactly. Peggy Lee, thank you so much. I, I am so excited to hear about your story and learn more about you. And I know we'll continue chatting for sure, but um, really appreciate your time in chatting with us today. I appreciate you immensely, Megan. Bye. Thank you so much. And I can't wait. I can't wait for us to be able to get face to face. Yes, for sure. For sure. So, all right. You take care. Have a good one. Thank you. What all right, you take hear care. is not a test. I'm rapping to the beat. And me, the groove. And my friends are gonna try to move your feet. You see, I am 